The Snuggle Zombies are back, but this could be the weakest entry in the series yet. With a shift to the future, a casting change, vibe change, and a new emphasis on science, this is the penultimate of the series. Hi, I'm the Artie Dans, and I welcome you to this video on the fourth of the five Lust of the Dead movies. Honestly, this movie is a bit boring, and it takes too long for things to happen. This fourth iteration starts after the 13 minute recap of the first three movies, and picks up where part three left off, with a battle between the cyborg Anne and the Kane clones. After about five minutes, the scene ends with both women being topless and Anne decapitated. Then the movie does a strange skip forward about five years, which is explained at the end of the film where the eye patch guy from the first movie is now in a wheelchair and speaks via a boombox. Alongside a new character, Akira, they spend half of the movie talking philosophy and science, and that seems very much out of place for a film like this. We're also introduced to two more new characters, Sayori and Ayaka, who appear to be scavenging for supplies but end up being attacked by some toxic men zombies. They get rescued by Akira, and we find out the truth about who she is. Or he is, because Akira is a hermaphrodite. And she's also Momoko's baby, who was born of the pre cum of a toxic man mixed with the love of Nurse Nozomi. I think so. Definitely the pre cum bit is right. Akira, Sayori, and Ayaka all work alongside Nurse Nozomi, the otaku from the first three movies and a new scientist who are using time travel to go back in time to see if they can change the course of history to stop the toxic man from being created. Oh, and wait until you hear about how time traveling happens. I've said it already, but this really is the weakest of the series. An obvious cash grab, this could probably have been combined with the next film and just been one film, considering there's only about 55 minutes of new footage after you remove the credits, recap and preview of the next film. The biggest change in this film is the recasting of Nurse Nozomi. I don't know why she was recast and not too keen to find out, but due to the recasting, the recap now features reshot footage of the new actress in existing scenes, with new close-up shots replacing the old actress, but long shots remaining. They've just ensured they've used edits where you can't make out the original actress's face. The visual style of this movie is also very different from the first three films. The street scenes are now a little brighter, with more colour. This makes sense due to the fact that the movie is set five years into the future, where all the rubble and smoke would have mostly cleared. But it's also resulted in different colour grading as well. It strangely has more film feel to it than shot on digital look, so maybe there's been some post-production work here. The effects still look super cheap and cheesy. Nothing's really changed there except for the zombie makeup, which now looks more like the traditional style of zombies you expect. Hilariously, the zombie shuffle has been replaced with the zombie thrust. Quite funny. The camera work has been improved. Much less handheld and no more mini zooms. It's now a little easier to follow what's going on. But then it's all stuffed up with a very poor audio experience. The dialogue is just horrible, echoey and hard to listen to. It hasn't been mixed properly, unless it was the poor presentation of the DVD I watched. And speaking of DVD, the translation in this one does not follow the first three films. Thus, things like Amazon are now called Female Village Survivors. It's also not as funny as the first three films, with an emphasis on being more crass than clever. Continuing the theme discussion of the first films, this one talks far too much about science. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to get my science advice from a movie like this. And it tries a little too hard, spending more than half of the movie on topics such as the Y chromosome, chaos theory and the butterfly effect, with more talk about how it's difficult for men and women to be friends, the destruction of the nuclear family, some complaints about equality, and a discussion on the story of the folktale of Princess Kagura. Yeah, really varied, really strange. But there is some fun to be had with this movie, even if it's a little crass. For example, the character of Sayori, played
played by the girl from My Chan's Daily Life, has a hilarious scene where she has to give hand pleasure to a zombie in order for his toxic man juice to be released anywhere but inside her. It's strange, but silly funny. You know what else is silly funny? How the time travel works. Momoko needs to get naked in a bathtub, where a contraption made of three vibrators stimulates every part of her. The resulting climax results in the time leap. Insane. Only in Japan. One very last thing, and this is an observation for the whole series, but why haven't the surviving women developed or created a piece of armor they could wear to protect their bottom halves from being forced snuggled? Kind of like a chastity belt. This bit has confused me. Unfortunately, we are seeing a decline with this series. This part is really poor, and I don't have high hopes for the fifth and final movie. And that's what I'll look at next week, the fifth and final. Hopefully it's better than this film. The preview at the end of the movie certainly does look a little bit more interesting. If you've seen them, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support the channel.